bonds payable. This tends to be the hardest subject for students to understand, but it's really pretty straightforward if you understand your time value of money concepts. So let's give it a go. First of all, what's a bond? It's just a different way to get a loan, and the reason it's difficult is it's something you've probably never seen. If you think about when a company wants to get a whole lot of different owners, it issues stock and it breaks the ownership into little bitty shares so different people can buy it, you can buy and sell, you don't have to stay with the company from the beginning to the end. That's the same idea with a bond except now it's going to be debt rather than ownership. So rather than getting a loan from one bank, we're going to split our debt up into thousand dollar increments and let different people buy and sell these bonds, these little pieces of debt over the life of the loan. So we can issue 20 year loans but we won't have the same owner at the end of the 20 years that we had at the beginning. They can buy and sell these bonds between themselves. They don't even have to call us to tell us they're, they're selling it. So it's a, it's a nice way to raise lots of debt all at one time because you can get more owners and you can get at a cheaper rate because people aren't stuck with your bond forever and always. Let's talk about how the cash payments are made because that's different from anything you experience with any of your loans as well. With the bond, you pay the interest periodically, but you pay all the principal at the end. So let's say we have a bond with a $100,000 principal, and it's a four-year bond, and we're going to pay 4% interest. So on the issue date, people are going to give us a bunch of cash, probably $100,000, and then each period, we're going to pay the bond holder $4,000. So we're going to do that four times. And at the very end, we'll give them back the whole $100,000. So the payments are a little bit different. In a car loan, you pay off some principal and some interest all at the same time. On this one, you just pay interest every period. Don't have to pay any of the principal back until the bond matures. The terminology is also a little different, which makes your life miserable. There's a par or a face value. That's normally $1,000 per bond. That hardly ever changes. So often uh, professors will even forget to tell you that it's $1,000 per bond. The interest rates, we have the coupon or stated rate. That's the amount that the company promises to pay the bondholder. So that's used to determine the amount of interest the company is going to pay out. But then there's this market or effective rate. And that's used for all the other calculations we're going to talk about. The problem is since bonds are outstanding for 10, 20 years, interest rates can change. So even though you might be paying 2% in interest, everybody else might be paying 3% and nobody's going to buy your bond sitting there at 2%. And so what they do is they adjust the price so that people always get the market rate on your bond. So we'll see how that works in a little bit, but that's what causes bonds to be so confusing. Let's price a bond. You issue 500 bonds. We already know they have a $1,000 par value, so that means that we'll be promising to pay back $500,000 in four years. With regard to interest, we have a coupon rate of 4%. That's what we pay back annually. And then there's a market rate. So besides the $500,000, we're also promising to pay everybody $20,000 a year for each of those four years. The market rate means the buyer is happy with a 3% return. So let's price the bond assuming that the market rate is 3%. The first thing you want to do is get rid of that coupon rate, put a big X through it, you use it to come up with the 20000 and then you don't use it ever again. 
we want to use the market rate because that's what the investor wants to get out of the bond. So you go to your handy dandy present value tables. Now I've got some old tables that just round to three decimals. If you're using your calculator you'll have a little different number but it should come pretty close. So I look up the present value of one for four years at three percent and I come up with 0.888. You know it's a present value factor because it's less than one. I then look up the present value of an annuity because I'm going to do this 20,000 four times. So the present value of an annuity for four years and take that times the 20,000. And when I do that, I come up with these numbers. So the price of the bond is 518,340 should make sense. I'm paying everybody 4%, that's my coupon rate. The market's happy with 3%, so they're going to give me a little extra. They're going to give me a little bonus because they'll be happy with 3% rate rather than the 4. The other choice is if we have a discount. The first is called a premium. This is a discount. Exactly the same problem, but the only thing I changed is that market rate I've changed to 5%. So interest rates have gone up in the market, and so people now want 5% on their loans. So same problem, 500000 plus 20. Notice I used that 4% to come up with the coupon. Again, ignore that coupon rate when you go to do your present valuing. So I'm going to look up um, present value of 1 for 4 years, but now look up 5% and I'll get a rate of 0.823. I want the present value of an annuity at 5% for 4 years and I'll get 3.546. Miraculously, when that all works out, I end up with a bond price that's less than the 500000 because the market's not happy with my measly little 4%. They want a little bit more, so they're going to take it out of the initial amount they loan to you. Once we know the numbers, we just have to do the journal entries. The premium is coming from two slides ago, and the discount is the one we just did. We found the cash to be 518340. I always start with the cash. Bonds payable is always the par value, so that's going to be 500, so that's the next easiest number, so I put that in. And then the discounter premium is just what it takes to balance. So in this case, I need 18,340 on the credit side, so that would be a premium. The premium goes on the balance sheet right next to the bonds payable to come up with the net bond payable. The discount, that was the slide right before. We came up with 482, 420 as the cash. Bonds payable, always at 500, don't think too much about it. But now we need something on the debit side, so that's how we know it's a discount. And that needs to be 17,580 to make a balance. And again, the discount then would be a contra liability account it goes right next to the bonds payable on the balance sheet. It's not that hard, just takes a little practice and a little time to remember which rates you use for which calculation. Good luck.